Yo guys, what is going on? This is Scummers from Docs coming back at you with another Discord.py episode and today we're going to be looking at how to integrate our bot with a database. And so we're going to rock with MongoDB which is a NoSQL database which has essentially got some nice JSON formatting which is what we're used to. So before we dump, jump into all this code over here, we're going to go over to Google, you're going to go to cloud.mongodb.com I want you guys to create an account, and once you've created an account, get to the screen. Um, it might pop up pop up with three options. Uh, just click. Uh, you wanna you wanna click this one here. Create a cluster for free, and then you can just host it wherever you want. I'm gonna go to Sydney because you know how I'm down in that Australasia area. That's all right. Set your cluster name. Set whatever you want. It's all right. You can't change this once you're done. And then we're just gonna create cluster, and we're gonna wait for that to to make. And then a couple things you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go over here to database access just while we're waiting. We're going to go add new database, uh, user, authentication, password, what's our, um, what's our password going to be, what's our username going to be, but scammers, password can be my name is cool. That's right, and then we're just going to click add user. And so when you're logging into your MongoDB, uh, you're going to want to put the username followed by the password in the connection string that we're going to get soon. Also, you'll need to whitelist your IP. So you can click here. Um, you can click to add current um, IPs or you can just allow access from everywhere. So we're just going to do that for now. Click confirm. If you don't set this up, you might get some errors where MongoDB fails to connect it shows some connection errors you might be wondering what's going on it'll just pay to check that your database access and network access is set up right now while we're waiting for this cluster to be created let's just go jump in the code and discuss some things so we've rearranged our bot we've made a new file called utils and in this is just going to be all of our utility functions so we've got our json which we've moved in here and then we've also got this new mongo.py so I've gone ahead and made a nice little interaction class for MongoDB. Just to save you guys having to make the calls yourself, you can just call the methods in this uh, this class and it'll do it for you. So essentially when you when you create a new instance of this class, you're just going to pass in your connection, which will be bot.db and then the document name, which will just be um, you know, config or whatever. But I'll showcase that in a quick second. Most of these methods here you don't need to worry about. These all just point to more internal methods. But you can call these. So if you want to if you want to update something, you just call update. So you just go like uh, bot .config .update and pass in the required variables and that's all you need to do. The class will handle everything else for you. So you guys can just read through all of these. Read through the doc strings, it's all pretty self-explanatory. And then down here we start our actual methods, so find by ID. Essentially just returns the data found under the ID which is passed in here. So the way MongoDB works is everything's got an ID. So every single field has an underscore ID and that is going to be set to something. So we're just going to get this ID here and we're going to go and we're going to check the database to see if this exists, right? So same for delete, so essentially, well, we'll talk about the class calls anyway. So find underscore one is a Mongo call for finding one document, the first document that matches your parameters which you specify in this dictionary. Delete, will delete many. So we're also just going to check, so we have to make sure it exists before we call delete. So if it doesn't exist, we're actually just going to return here, not sure why I had that there. And then in here, we're just going to try delete the ID. Now inserting into our database, we're going to pass through a dictionary. And within that dictionary, we're going to make sure that it's actually a dictionary. And then we're going to make sure that it's got an underscore ID, that way we can supply it ourselves. And then we're just going to go insert underscore one and pass in the dictionary and it'll insert it all for, for us. Now upset might be something new you guys uh, haven't encountered before. But upsert um, essentially just checks if something's in the database already or not and then applies the relevant function. So if you don't know if you need to insert data or update an already existing file, 
just call upsert and it will do it for you. So this method down here is defined right down the bottom, it's just a private internal class method for getting all of the data because we were doing a couple different things in find originally. But that's alright. So essentially if the, the data already exists, we're just going to go and update it, which is this function here, so it just passes it through to the next one, otherwise we're going to create a new uh, item in our database. So update by ID again. We're just checking if the dictionary. You know, we're checking we can we can get the ID. We're going to return on these. Just get rid of that comment because it's a bit misleading since we no longer raise. And then we're going to pop out the ID and remove it from the dictionary. Since to update one, you need to pass through two separate dictionaries. So one is the ID. One is the document you want to change. And then next, you've got the uh, MongoDB operator. The operator for setting something, for updating something, is this set here, and then you pass through what you want to update. So we're just going to pass through our dictionary. So what about unsetting? Well, it's essentially the same, except you just call unset. Now, with unset, you only have to make sure that this dictionary contains... So let's say we wanted to remove the prefix, right? That's all we really need to, to put. So you can just put a one here, you can put a zero, you can put whatever you want. You just have to make sure that the field name is correct. And that's pretty much it for that. And then we're just gonna go down here. We're gonna show you how to increment something. And then we're gonna get all the items and then that's us done. And we're gonna jump in the actual code and start working with it. So the increment one essentially just, you know, increments it by the amount. You pass through the field that you wanna increment by pass through the amount and then down here you're just going to call increment and then you're going to do the old key value boy so field and then how much you want to change it by that can be a positive or a negative and that works perfectly fine I'm not sure why all these are past that ones I should have put those up when I was changing around the code from production but that's all right this may fail as well so we're just going to quickly chuck in a wait in front of it and then down here we just got get all and essentially everything that just get all it just gets every document in the database and puts it in a list and returns the list now let's jump back under our bot file let's go up here so we've got a we've got a little document we've got our collections there'll be nothing in here at the moment so we're going to go to overview oh no we're going to we're going to jump back we're going to go to connect connect with your application for drivers, we're going to go to Python, select 3.6 or later, copy, and then we're just going to go down here and go into our secrets.json file and copy and paste our driver. So it essentially just looks like this because I don't want to open up my secrets file. It is, it's a string like this, and then so that's my user, and then essentially I'm just going to put in the password, the password that I had before. You know the one we set up in database access might as well just keep that the same and so you're going to go put that in there boom and then once it's in there we're going to pop over to discord and just show the bot working so i'm just going to pull this up on my other screen so i can just keep track of everything that's happening and just make sure that everything's working and so we're just going to go over a couple changes that we've made in this file while we wait so essentially everything that was on the json file before we have transfer it over to our database. So we might as well start right at the top. So we're gonna import from utils.mongo down here our class. And then when we have an on ready event, we make the connection here. So we go bot.mongo, which is our connection, bot.db. So this is essentially going and saying, where do we wanna, where do we wanna store everything? So it's like, think of this as bot underscore config and then this one here is config dot json is essentially the way to look at that but for now I'm just gonna go back to calling these menu docs you can call it whatever you want and so the way to set up a new um, instance of our document class is just to go bot dot whatever you want to call it for ease of access equals document pass through your connection which you've specified here and then what you want your document to be 
And then here we just go through and we just print everything out that is currently in this database here. In this one here, sorry. Now we'll just jump back up to our prefix. Well, I'll run the bot and we'll just show that that works. So it goes on, it logs in. And then we'll just see that it goes, it's initialized as a database and it's got our ID and it's got a custom prefix. Sweet. That's all we need. So now you might notice this get prefix command is a bit different. And that's because it's needed to be modified to suit our database. So first we need to check if message.guild is false. So if we're in DMs, um, we're just going to return the default prefix because you can't have a custom prefix in DMs. And it will break if you try to because everything is stored by guild IDs. So if you try to put a user ID, it won't work. And then we're just going to try to get all of the data. And then we're going to check to make sure that we have an actual usable prefix. Uh, if we don't, we're going to return the default prefix again. Otherwise, we'll return the proper prefix and then we've just got to try accept so that if anything breaks down here, we're just going to make sure that we always return a prefix. And then, like usual, we just put it in here. And then our new connection URL we've also just defined down here. So it's pretty simple stuff, really. Now, scrolling down, we've got our on message event, which I've just updated to get by ID, pass through the message.guild.id because we're saving everything by ID. Now, if that returns none, so essentially if MongoDB can't find a document, it will return none. So if it returns none or prefix is not in the file, pass the default one through, otherwise give us the actual prefix. Now I could show this running, we'll just jump in Discord and we'll just go at testbot, enter my prefix here, it's hyphen, hyphen help. Cool. That's all we needed. So let's jump back under the code and let's just go take a look at some other things that we've changed under the hood. So another way we've implemented a couple things is in our prefix command. So we've changed it so that you can change your prefix and it's really simple, it's two lines of code. So we just access the um, class, the document class using self.bot.config. Since it's asynchronous, we call await and then we just go upsert. So we don't even need to check if it already exists. The class will do all of the hard lifting for us. We just have to tell it, hey look, I want to change this guild ID and here's your new prefix. And then we just got to say, look man, we've updated the prefix. And otherwise, this is how we unset things down here. So essentially we're just calling it on this message.guild.id. But message isn't defined, so that'll error. So we just got to go ctx.guild.id. And so prefix is not one, obviously, but you just pass through any value just so it's a valid dictionary. And then you're all good to go. So again, let's run the bot and then we can just show it working. Prefix, what should we set the new prefix to? py dot. py dot help. Oh, at menu docs. Sorry, this is my own Discord at testbot. Make sure not to include that. Sweet. And then we can just go pi.dp. I'm sure I set up an alliance for that. I did indeed, which means something's gone wrong. So bot is not defined. That's because it's meant to be self.bot. We can go pi.dp that the skills prefix has been reset back to default so we can go pi dot help it doesn't work so it's gone back to the hyphen so let's just set another custom prefix real quick we're just going to go and set it to pi dot again and then we're just going to go jump back into the database so here's my database here and i've just pulled up my menu docs and then we've gone to the config document and then if i just refresh this real quick to update it with the new data. You can also click refresh up here. You notice that we've got our guild ID and under that we've got our custom prefix, which is cool. So we've got it in there. So what happens if I just go pi.dp? Then we're just gonna hit refresh. And now you should notice that it's deleted the prefix. 
but it hasn't deleted the, the whole guild, even though there's nothing else besides the ID. You can see that every file has an underscore ID, and so we're essentially just using um, the guild ID, the user ID, the message ID, that type of thing, just because it makes it way simpler. So, the question for this episode would be to you guys, can you change your blacklisting system so that instead of using JSON files, uh, you make a new file in here called uh, blacklists, and then you make a new document entry, so this would be a user ID, this would be the reason they got blacklisted, that type of thing. Or you could just have it in the config, and then you could just have this guild prefix. No, that'd be the way to do it. This guild, and then just in here, you'd just have another line. Add field after prefix. Blacklists. And then over here, I'm just going to change this to an array. And then in here, you'd just have your blacklisted user ID IDs. So that's the challenge. Can you guys do that? If you guys need a hand, you know, as always, just jump over in Discord. Uh, we're more than willing to help you out. Otherwise, Happy coding guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was something different, less DPY related, more related to, you know, hooking you into that database life. But uh, anyways, peace out y'all.